Is it true that you voted to, re, uh, to cut the funding for embassy security? Uh, absolutely. Look, we have to make priorities and choices in this country. We have, think about this, 15,000 contractors in uh, Iraq. We have more than 6,000 contractors, a private army there for President Obama in Baghdad. And we're talking about can we get two dozen or so people into Libya to help protect our forces? When you're in tough economic times, you have to make difficult choices. Okay, you have but, to prioritize so, things. So I, so, okay, so you're prioritizing. So when there yep. are complaints that, in fact, that there was not enough security, you've just said absolutely that, that mm -hmm. you cut. You, you were the one to vote against, you know, to, to increase security for the State Department, which would lead directly to Benghazi. That seems like you're saying no. you have a hand in the responsibility to this, right? The funding of the security, if you're happy to cut it. You How get, you get it, but because there are there are literally a, a, a close to 200 embassies, cl uh, consulates, those types of things. You have thousands of people that are involved in this. You have to prioritize things. Libya before 9/11, two bombings on our uh, on, on our consulate out there. Of course, that's got to be a higher priority than making sure that we're protecting. But if there's you know, pressure, some, some we, other we, we, we just heard that the, from the clip from yeah. one of the guys who's going to testify before you today that there was definitely this this pressure in his mind yeah. to to not staff the embassy fully security wise wouldn't that pressure be coming from you directly essentially people and others who voted against the funding for security keep it low because there's no funding for security well you're also talking about a vote that never came to fruition because we actually continued at the exact same funding levels moving forward this is a vote that happened over in the house but remember the senate never uh, got to this point so we did a continuing resolution so it's a red herring the reality is you have to prioritize things and when you're talking about such a small small number of security personnel they're in country that's a problem the other thing that we're going to talk about in this hearing is the fact that the physical facilities themselves did not meet the minimum standards and when you're in Libya after a revolution, I've got to argue that that's got to be a higher priority than protecting some other, you know, uh, uh, compound in Mauritius or wherever you might be. I don't mean to pick on them, but you've got to prioritize things. And what clearly didn't happen is Libya was not a priority. I believe what I've heard is that it's because they wanted the appearance of normalization. That's what they wanted. That fit the, the uh, Obama narrative moving forward. It'll be interesting to see what comes out of your hearing today. Nice to see you, as always. Thank you for talking with Thanks, us. Thanks, Appreciate it.